Well, here now is Dr. Chris Lintott, a cosmologist at Oxford University and presenter of The Sky at Night. Would have been pretty embarrassing if it hadn't woken up, wouldn't it? It would have been embarrassing and upsetting, but thankfully it's working and we've just heard that it's also sending back more than just that hello signal. It's sending back telemetry, data about how it's doing. So that's good news too. Tell me honestly, didn't that look to you like a stage celebration? Well, it's a very European celebration. This is how you tell it's not a NASA mission. But you know the feeling of setting an alarm and waking up in the middle of the night, not certain that it's going to go off. And certainly that's what I was feeling earlier today. And I think for the people who'd been working on this mission for 20 years, I think that was a big moment. OK, you mentioned 20 years, which was when the project was authorised, about right. 1993. At that time, it obviously seemed a sensible mission. 20 years on, does it still seem a sensible mission? It's a fabulous mission. It's rare in space science, I think, to do something that's never been done before. And this probe oh. is going to do exactly that. It's going to ride alongside a comet as the comet slingshots around the sun and becomes active and starts giving off water and gas and dust. Uh, and we've literally never seen that happen before. We've flown past comets but we've never rode alongside one. And so the chance to see something that's never seen before is very exciting. Let me put a penny-pinching question sure. to you. Of course you're terribly excited at having how many... How much money to spend on this? Well, it's about a billion euros okay. in today's money. So that's right. about the same as 3A, 380s, uh, if you want to have an aviation metaphor. And Not particularly, the point, they take people on holiday. But let's say, I mean, anyone will be glad to have that amount of money to sure. blow on an enthusiast. Well, it, you have to think about where the money's gone. It, the money doesn't go to the comet. The money's spent here on <laughs> Earth. It goes to people, it goes to technology, and it goes to uh, industries in this country and, and throughout Europe. So I think this is money well spent, and we're going to get a fabulous ride out of it as a bonus. But what's so exciting about going to a comet? We know a comet has water on it, don't we? We do. We already know that. We do, but we don't know what type of water. Does you it see, matter? there's this well, there's this theory that all the water on Earth, including this water here, came from I comets. Touch that if no, I well, I'm assuming it's water. Yes. But assuming it is. It will have come, we think, from comets just like the one that Rosetta is going to chase. And Rosetta will put a lander down on this comet. It will take a sample of fresh material left over from the formation of the solar system 4.6 billion years ago. And it will tell us whether Earth's water really did come from space in this way. Well, isn't that common sense? Well, where else, well, I mean, where else would it come from? We know exactly. the Earth was volatile and we know it was hot, but it had water in its early days, that was, we think, evaporated. And what we're really doing here is we're learning the story of our own planet and we're learning a, a history lesson from billions of years ago. We can only do that by getting out to the pristine material that's slingshotting around the solar system. Chris Lintot, thank you.